Holy crap, shirt's so freaking wrinkled. Hey, Venom fans, Venom Man here tonight, and we are gonna be taking a look at the Eastern Coral Snake, one of the most toxic snakes in North America. This is just a little update video. It's been a little while since you guys have seen him, and you seem to like him, so let's go ahead and get you on in here and take a close look at him. So this guy is actually hiding underneath his palm leaves, and he did just shed, so I'll be getting that out of there. I'm thinking about putting him inside a bigger enclosure here very soon, but with that being said, he hasn't been eating on his own, so I want to limit the stress as much as possible. And uh, just a gorgeous looking little snake. So these are one of the United States few elapids. Of course, the other being the Arizona coral snake. And uh, some people say the Texas coral snake, which could just be a variation of the eastern. It's kind of still out as far as I know for debate. But Nalapid, of course, is the snake that has uh, the cobras, mambas, taipans, crates, stuff like that. So this is not related to like rattlesnakes or copperheads. So this is just very beautiful. See that little fling? That's typical. They flail. What's very interesting is these are actually what you would call Ophiophagus, which Ophiophagus is Greek, meaning snake eater. So these eat other snakes. Now, it seems that they favor snakes without keeled scales. So a snake with a keeled scale, like the Bushmasters. Pause just one second. I'm not saying that these guys eat Bushmasters. I was using Bushmasters as an example of a snake with a very keeled scale. Anyway, press play. Uh, many of the rat snakes have a slightly keeled scale. These guys don't really favor them very much. Uh, they like like smooth earth snakes and stuff like that, little worm snakes. Now I have seen them eating corn snakes and stuff like that, but they have that big head, just awesome big little venom glands for such a tiny little snake, very thin bodied. And what's interesting about Ophiophagus snakes that they've noticed is the venom in many of the species of snake eating snakes will actually cause the reptile that they prey upon to flail. So this guy is what we call fossorial. And fossorial means living underground. So this guy will be not necessarily underground like under earth, but like under leaves typically, and just out of plain sight, under rocks, under any sort of brush that they can find. Um, so as they come upon a snake that they want to eat, they will bite the snake and the venom actually seems to cause the snake to flail as it's dying. Therefore, this snake can pick it up, figure out where it is, it can feel the vibrations, and it's very aware of its surroundings when it comes to something touching the earth beside it. They feel those vibrations. Just kind of interesting, or at least that's my understanding from reading the literature. But I will go ahead and get that shed out of there. Because I don't want to leave that in there. Sign of a dirty cage. Oh, ripped it in half. It doesn't really matter. I wasn't really planning on saving it for anything. But just a very beautiful little snake. Now, what's also interesting about some Ophiophagus snakes is that their venom glands are actually very narrow. Like you would see this in the long glanded blue coral snake. And this is where the venom gland actually starts right up here. It will actually run through the jawbone and they say it's about as thin as a thread and it'll run halfway down the body. So that's so they don't have such a bulbous head, you know, like a, a pit viper does. So then they can dig a lot better through the ground and under the leaf litter. They don't get hung up with that big bulbous head. I just found that to be very interesting. Now inside some of my videos, and I'm sure all you guys have heard before the riddle that says, Red on black, friend to jack, red on yellow, kill a fellow, which as you see, the red against the yellow, kill a fellow. So this is the deadly one. This is the toxic one. This is very good. Rhyme, kinda. Um, the milk snakes and king snakes throughout the Americas uh, typically mimic this snake to try to keep from being predated upon by animals that would eat them. But a lot of people get lured into the false sense of security because they will find one of these and it's abnormally, abnormally colored. 
So therefore it, it won't be, you know, the red on yellow. So they're like, well, this is a safe snake. This ain't a coral snake. And then people get bit. Now, yet again, that's probably only one out of a thousand snakes, but there's always that chance. So if you can't correctly identify it from multiple different ways, don't touch it. You know, if you find a beautiful little red milk snake or a beautiful little scarlet king snake, that's wonderful. You know, go ahead, show your children, you know, but make sure that you can correctly identify it before you go messing with it. Now, what's interesting about these snakes is for the most part, they're pretty harmless to people. And why I say they're pretty harmless to people is because if you are coming in contact with the snake, typically it's because you're picking up the leaf litter. You're reaching down into the soil and you're moving the soil. And that's how you get bit by this snake. So typically gardeners or small children, small children will see a brightly colored moving, fast moving thing through the grass and they'll try to pick it up. But besides these two types of, of encounters, it's very seldom that anybody gets bit by these because they have a very, very small fang and typically people in America wear full covered shoes, you know, not sandals. I mean, I know down in Florida people wear sandals where these snakes are found, but typically people that are walking through the woods will be wearing a full-toed shoe and when you step down on it, it doesn't actually strike high enough up over the shoe to cause an envenomation. So there are envenomations from these snakes, but it's very rare. So uh, if you're ever doing any gardening, make sure you're wearing your thick leather gloves and you should be okay. Uh, you know, be mindful of the snakes around. Tread lightly, watch where you're stepping, because even if you don't step on this guy, you could always step on an Eastern Diamondback and that would be much, much worse in my opinion, but just very beautiful. So in theory, according to the literature, it takes about five milligrams of venom from this snake to kill an adult human being. And uh, they can give you about 15, from what I hear from a large specimen, giving you pretty much everything they have in that one bite. Now, of course, they can bite multiple times, delivering multiple loads of venom. But with that being said, so in theory, with the math, it could kill you three times over if you want to look at it like that. But I, I figure if it's a fatal bite, it's a fatal bite. Who cares? But uh, the Black Mamba takes anywhere from 10 to 15 megs of venom to kill a person. So needless to say, these are extremely toxic if you want to look at it like that. But just a beautiful snake. You know, if you leave them alone, they'll leave you alone. As you've seen, I was playing this of the bedding, and I'm over here moving around. He doesn't know what this is, and he just doesn't care. You know, because I'm not threatening him. And I should be. You know, he, he thinks I am. I have a bright light on. I have a camera on him, which looks like a giant eyeball. I'm kind of poking and prodding. I just moved his bedding, and he still doesn't care. I'm even touching him. Now, that could be my finger. He doesn't know. He doesn't have heat-seeking pets, so still not going to strike, not going to try to bite, not going to whip around. Anyway, I'm going to go and cover him back up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. So I really appreciate you guys checking out that video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you like it, show your friends, and don't forget to subscribe. Y'all have a wonderful night.